Our universe contains many mysteries. But few people stop to think about the mysterious numbers that appear almost everywhere. Some irrational numbers, such as pi, are present in many places. But if you ask some physicists what the most mysterious number they know is, several of them will tell you a number you've probably never heard of. 1 over 137. To be more precise, we could say 1 over 137.03599, or even 0.00729737. But for the sake of practicality, in this video, we'll refer to this number simply as 1 over 137. At first glance, it seems to be just a random fraction that you could find by solving math, but nothing too unusual. If you had to choose a number that you find more mysterious, I doubt very much that you would choose 1 over 137. But if you showed that same number to a theoretical physicist, the reaction would be completely different. The very famous physicist Richard Feynman once described that it is one of the greatest mysteries of physics, a magic number that comes to us without any man-made understanding. Feynman also said that every good theoretical physicist had this number on a wall and worried about it. Nobel Prize winning physicist Wolfgang Pauli said that the first question he would ask the devil when he died would be the meaning of this number. Pauli spent part of his life trying to decipher what this number meant. Somehow it seemed that the universe itself had given it to us as a gift. He died of pancreatic cancer on December 15, 1958, after falling ill during a lecture a few weeks earlier. And guess what? The number of the last hospital room he stayed in was room number one over. Just kidding, it was room 137. Friends, family, and visitors who came to see them a few days before he died said that Polly talked about being in room number 137 and for everyone to come and see him. But what is so special about the number one over 137 that made one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century and also one of the fathers of quantum mechanics focus on it until the day he died? This number has a name, fine structure constant. And in physics, it is represented by the Greek letter alpha. In equation form, the number is represented as the square of the electron's charge over 4 pi times the permittivity of the vacuum times the reduced Planck constant times the speed of light. That's quite a lot. If you look closely at this equation, you'll notice that it's made up of constants like the speed of light. And constants are things we're used to in physics. We see constants all the time. The speed of light constant itself appears directly in equations from quantum mechanics to general relativity. The gravitational constant is perhaps one of the most important constants, along with the speed of light. Even Planck's constant appears in a series of equations and is almost a pillar of quantum mechanics. But none of them is called the mysterious number of the universe, and few have left so many physicists obsessed for most of their lives. And to understand what kept so many theoretical physicists awake, we need to go back in time to the birth of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics began to advance at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century when physicists began to question what matter was made of. Several physicists carried out various experiments and proposed different models to understand what matter was made of. And one of the fundamental experiments to understand what the atom is like was the emission of lines, mainly from hydrogen. When an electron receives energy, it jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, but nature will always look for the lowest possible energy level, so the electron goes back to the lowest energy level and... In this process, it needs to release energy. The way an electron releases energy is through photons, that is through the emission of light, which are electromagnetic waves. And depending on the energy level, the electron emits photons with a given energy or a given wavelength related to that energy. We observe this emission through emission lines and those of hydrogen are special because they are found in the visible spectrum. In fact, the t-shirt I'm wearing in this video today is from my store, LOSS, and contains the entire absorption spectrum of the sun. And you get 10% off your first purchase using the coupon LOSS10. And the first 200 people who make purchases over R$150 this month will win LOSS bracelets. Just don't wait too long because they're running out and the discount coupon applies to sweatshirts too. So click on the link in the fixed comment or go to useloss.com.br and wear the universe with me because every t-shirt from my brand has a deep meaning. Now back to the video. Over time, the experiment became more and more sensitive and as a result, the results became more sensitive and something strange began to appear. Where were the emission lines? Experimental physicists began to find not just one line, but two lines very, very, very close together. 
so close that without the right equipment, they appear to be just one. And it wasn't until 1916 that physicist Arnold Sommerfeld was able to explain the reason for these two lines. Sommerfeld realized that each energy level depended on the spins of each electron, so it was as if there were two extremely close energy levels. And the separation between these two energy levels was called the fine structure. Sommerfeld also realized that the distance was always a multiple of a certain number, or rather of a certain equation. This equation results in 7.29735256933 times 10 to the minus 3, or rounded off as a fraction, 1 over 137. But what exactly was the reason for a separation of the atom's energy level to cause so much interest among physicists? Didn't they have more interesting things in the universe to research, like black holes and dark matter? And this is where I ask for calm. I've just talked about where the mysterious one over 137 appears. And right here we can already see something strange by looking at the equation. If you open up each unit, each constant, you'll notice that all the units cancel each other out, leaving a dimensionless number. In other words, the fine structure constant is dimensionless regardless of which units of measurement you use. Dimensionless numbers are not uncommon, but they are curious for the following reason. An extraterrestrial civilization would arrive at the same number without needing to know the definition of meters, seconds, or any other unit. This number is universal in the sense that it is not exclusive to the units we humans have created. But the number 1 over 137 began to attract attention not because it was dimensionless and a good way to communicate with aliens, but because it began to appear literally all the time. If you take Bohr's atomic model, which today is an outdated model, but it still is interesting from a physical point of view. The speed that an electron would have when orbiting the nucleus with the lowest energy level divided by the speed of light would be 1 over 137. Or if you compare this electron's energy with its rest energy, you arrive at the number 1 over 137 squared. Departing from Bohr's model, suppose you take two electrons and place them a certain distance apart. In order to overcome the electrical repulsion between the two, you'll need a certain amount of energy. Now take that energy and divide it by the energy of a photon with a wavelength the size of that distance, 1 over 137. And if you go even deeper, you'll find this number more times. If you take the circumference of a circle and divide it by twice the radius of that circle, you'll find... Sorry, it was just a joke. The fine structure constant always comes up when you analyze the relationship between charged particles and the electromagnetic field. Basically, the constant seems to be trying to tell us something, but we have no idea what it is. We always observe the fine structure constant when the electromagnetic force is in some kind of relationship with charges. And here is a perfect place to bring in the concept of coupling, which means the interaction of two things, like atoms. When two particles are approaching each other, there is a probability that they will interact, that is, that they will couple. Physicist Richard Feynman was responsible for introducing something called Feynman diagrams, which make it easier to visualize these interactions between particles. And in these diagrams, we can see whether or not two particles can interact and calculate the probability of interaction between them. The fine structure constant, when squared, appears as the probability that an electron tends to absorb or emit a photon. So here we can say that the constant is like a kind of coupling force for the electromagnetic force. Or, in an easier way, it is the strength of the relationship between electric charges and the electromagnetic field. So, in this way, we can better understand why the examples I gave arrive at this constant. What remains strange is the following. Why is it dimensionless, and why does it have the value it has? The gravitational constant can be seen as a way of measuring the force with which two particles are interacting, and it has units of meter cubed divided by kilogram times second squared. I can change these units if I want to. I can say that one meter is the size of my dog, Plank, and that one second is the exact duration of this video. If I make these changes, I'll arrive at a new value for the gravitational constant, which will conform to these new units I've just invented. But this doesn't happen with the fine structure constant. It's as if the number itself is important. It seems to be saying something that we haven't managed to grasp yet. And the number is constant in the sense that it's the same no matter where in the universe we measure it or at what time in the universe. But it depends on the energy. The value of this constant changes as the energy of the system we observe changes. And this is quite curious, 
especially considering that during the first moments of the universe, just after the Big Bang, the energy density was extremely high. And under these conditions, we would expect the value of this constant to be close to one. But as the universe expanded in the following moments, the number decreased until it reached the value of 1 over 137. But why? What made this number stop here? Why don't we see the number change when we observe stars and galaxies in the early universe? What prevents it from reaching zero, or at least values closer to zero? Not that I'm complaining, far from it, because our very existence is linked to this number and its exact value. If the value were lower than this, the electrons would be interacting very weakly with the positive charge in the atoms. This means that the atoms would be very unstable and it would be difficult to maintain an atom in the form we know. Some theoretical calculations show that if the value of this constant were just 4% lower than the current value, it would be impossible to form the element carbon, and carbon is essential for life as we know it. Without it, we wouldn't have heavier elements. Furthermore, if stars couldn't form carbon, they would die much earlier and would only form the first elements in the periodic table. On the other hand, if the constant were a little higher than its current value, the electrons would be bound much more tightly to the nucleus of the atoms. And this would make it difficult for electrons and the atoms themselves to make atomic bonds to form molecules or chemical reactions. It's as if the universe had handpicked the exact value of this constant and we don't know how it came about. Some physicists suggest that the constant is an important ingredient in the search for a unified theory of physics. The fact that it is dimensionless and appears in different situations would mean that it could be a way of relating different areas of physics. And others even suggest that all constants, such as the gravitational constant or the speed of light, are related to this constant and that it defines all the values we see today. And there are also those who believe that this number is giving us some information about the formation of matter itself, in other words, what matter is made of. Basically, the universe has given us a riddle and we have to guess to find the answer we want. But there are also people who suggest that this number is not special and it works just like pi works, which is also a dimensionless number and appears in almost everything in physics. Pi is a mathematical constant and there are suggestions that alpha is also a mathematical constant. We just don't know exactly where it came from yet. In any case, this is one of the mysteries within physics that has lasted over a hundred years, and famous physicists who defined quantum mechanics have died curious about it. But what about you? What do you think? Is this number giving us the answer to all the mysteries of the universe, or is it just our obsession with looking for patterns? I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much and see you next time. Blackboard singing in the of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly